listen everybody to the words I have to say Better get ready this is Daniel White the Fourth, and for my father, Daniel White the Third, with the Second Coming Watch update. This is update number 456. Let's take a quick look at today's prophecy-related headlines, which point towards the Second Coming of the Lord Jesus Christ and the end of the world as we know it. First, according to CNN, Canadian health officials confirmed on Wednesday that a resident from Alberta has died from H5N1 avian flu the first case of the virus in North America. Canada's Health Minister Rona Ambrose said the infected individual had recently traveled to Beijing. The Canadian case also is the first case of H5N1 infection ever imported by a traveler into a country where the virus is not present in poultry. No such H5N1 viruses have been detected in people or in animals in the United States. Second, according to CNN, a volcanic eruption in Indonesia that has displaced more than 22,000 people is intensifying. Mount Sinabung, which began spewing gas in September after a three-year slumber, has erupted over 220 times this week. The hot ashes and smoke have caused pyroclastic flows, a fast-moving mass of gas and rocks, to stretch to the seven kilometers down the southeast slope of the 8,530 foot mountain in North Sumatra. Last week, flows reached three kilometers. The government has evacuated more than 22,000 people to 34 temporary camps. A national emergency has not been declared, but the government is prepared for the worst case scenario. Third, according to the BBC, the number of people in the United Kingdom who believe in the devil has dropped dramatically. A survey by YouGov found that although a third of the public says they are Church of England goers, only 29% of them believe in the devil. The news comes as 400 Church of England parishes begin trialing alternative child Baptist services without the words devil or sin. Peter Kellner, YouGov president, told BBC Radio 5, perhaps the church is bringing their practice into line with their own community. Fourth, according to the Jerusalem Post, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas and Jordan's King Abdullah on Wednesday discussed U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry's latest proposals for achieving peace between the Palestinians and Israel. Abbas said after meeting with the Jordanian monarch in Amman that the two sides agreed on a united response to Kerry's ideas. Abbas said Kerry is still presenting ideas and we are discussing them. He will come soon and we have ongoing meetings with his aides. Fifth, according to the BBC, the first consignment of Syrian chemical weapons materials has left the country on a Danish ship. The vessel left the northern Syrian port of Latakia on Tuesday, escorted by Russian and Chinese warships. Removing the most dangerous chemicals is the first step of a UN-backed deal to eliminate Syria's chemical arsenal. A previous bid to collect the materials was aborted after Syrian officials failed to deliver the toxic chemicals to the collection point in Latakia. The hazardous cargo is due to be taken to Italy, where it will be loaded onto a U.S. Navy ship and shipped to international waters for destruction in a specially created titanium tank on board. The Bible says in Mark 8:36 through 38 For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me and of my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Our second coming quote for today is from Matthew Henry. He said, Christ will come when he pleases, to show his sovereignty, and will not let us know when, to teach us our duty. You can read these stories in more detail and get more prophecy-related news at secondcomingherald.com. If you are not ready for the return of Jesus Christ, may I encourage you to get ready today by receiving Him as your Savior. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Just believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried and rose again from the dead by the power of God for you, so that you can live eternally with him. Pray and ask him to come into your heart today, and he will. Romans 10.13 says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Keep looking up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let us join in the prayer of John the Revelator. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Don't